proteins killing you, it's making you fat, it's causing kidney disease. There are a lot of claims as to what protein actually does. So let's see what the science says. Is protein good for you or is it actually killing you? Starting off with protein causes kidney disease. So there was a study done in 2022, a systematic review and a meta-analysis that looked at the impact of a high protein diet, where high protein in this context was classified as 1.5 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. And this was done across 2,144 papers. And their conclusion was that the GFR, so glomular filtration rate, which is essentially how they determine kidney function, it showed that there was no significant impact on the GFR rate of healthy adults. So eating a diet that did have 1.5 grams of protein per kilogram body weight was okay. This then raises the question of what about a person that does have a kidney related issue? So I do want to make it very clear. I'm not a specialist in the kidney related area. I'm a nutritionist. And so this is out of my scope, but I have seen several studies, which I've linked below that do say that people that do have kidney disease or some type of kidney issue, when they did consume a high protein diet, their mortality rate wasn't actually increased. And so some of the reasons why this could have been the case is that when you do consume protein, like protein is very important. And so by consuming protein, they actually improved or rather maintained their health. And protein is really important to prevent sarcopenia, which is muscle degradation. And when you lose muscle, you lose strength. And there have been a lot of, um, there's, there's been a lot of research that does show that muscle loss or sarcopenia is one of the leading indicators for the development of a lot of neurological diseases like Alzheimer's or things like that, because muscle is super, super important. But as I said before, this is not a recommendation. This is just some interesting information that's food for thought. This next one is one of my favorites. It's protein makes you fat. And it's actually laughable because out of all the macros, you have carbs, you have fats, you have protein. They choose the one that's, le that's probably less likely to make you fat when eaten in surplus. And the thing is, I always say everything moderation because when you eat more of anything, like you eat more, you gain more. It's very simple. But the thing is with protein, it has the satiety effect, the thermogenic effect. So what happens is when you eat protein, um, your body, so you have hormones like GLP-1s, peptide YY, which signal to your brain, hey, I'm full, stop eating. And oh, if you're interested in GLP-1s, check out my Ozempic, um, Manjaro, that type of artificial GLP-1 video. It's very interesting. Um, anyways, back to this. So when you do eat protein, you're actually less likely to overeat it, which makes sense because when you think about 100 grams of fries versus 100 grams of chicken breast, which one are you more likely to overeat? You're more likely to overeat the fries because your body doesn't have the same satiety effect when it's carbs and fats compared to protein. And the thermogenic effect, it essentially looks at energy expenditure, so how much energy is required to digest and metabolize food. And the reality is your body tries to be as efficient as it can be, so it tries to be as lazy as it can be. And so when, when you eat protein, it needs more time and effort and energy to digest it. And so you're, it's more likely to say, stop eating. I need time to actually process this food, which as a result means you eat less of it. Ultimately as well, protein cannot be stored in the body like carbs do. So for example, when you eat carbs, the glucose is then stored as glycogen, which your body burns later on. But with protein, your body just excretes it away, which is where the whole... Um, idea behind eating too much protein puts pressure on the kidney comes from since kidneys are crucial to that process. So there you have it, the two main protein myths that keep people up at night. And yes, I've got a lot of requests on these, which is why I know that's what everyone thinks. A little anecdote to tie it all together. So back in the day, I was on a high protein diet. Um, I think it was around two grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. I was put on it by my trainer. This is important because trainer was not a nutritionist and I did that for a whole year and it was just so bad like my my stomach rejected it my body was like no we hate this and so when I switched my life completely changed like it was so much better she had energy I felt like me again and so I'm, I'm making this point because just because everyone says high protein is good or high protein xyz or keto whatever it may be it's important to make sure you find a diet that works for you like the diet should be serving you you should not be serving the diet so that's one thing to keep in mind. Don't feel peer pressured or get social media pressured these days to try or to be on something that doesn't work for you. It's okay to try it. 
And that's why I also think a nutritionist is important because maybe that high protein diet would have worked better if um, I was I was getting some specialized help. So um, yeah, it's something to keep in mind. This isn't exactly backed by science or rather I haven't seen too much on this, but I also feel like gender does make a difference. So I've, talk, I've talked to heaps of women, myself included, and I found that protein or different forms of protein can have different reactions. So I've seen a lot of women have reactions to um, whey protein concentrate, for example. But when I switched over to isolate, I was fine. So it's, it's just seeing what works for you and getting the help that can help you get there. That's all for today. Let me know in the comments below if you like this video, um, what you want to see next. Have you been on a high protein diet, thinking on it, any other new diets that are keeping up at night? <laughs> and yeah, wishing you all happy digestive systems. Until the next one. Next one.